What's going on YouTube? Gabriel Say, aka The Truth, checking in this time with a QA. and a Few of you have been leaving questions, especially on the Access or Areas um, videos. So I decided to take a few of them and I'll answer them for you today. But before I get started, I'm not sure if you've, all of you have seen this, but there's limited edition t-shirts, which um, I put up for pre-order a couple of weeks ago. Pre-order. The pre-order time is going to end on Sunday, but it's for these. Unleash the Beast. Fitted tees. Show off the gains. Got an embroidered logo on the back. And each one is going to be signed, and only 50 of these are going to be made. So um, I'll put the link across the screen, and it will be in the description as well. Um, get your hands on them. Pre-orders end on Sunday. But that aside, let's get on to the questions. Okay, so let's have a look. So I've picked out 10 questions. Just 10. If you want to have your question answered, hit me up on Twitter. My link for Twitter is here. Or comment on the videos. Twitter is easier because as soon as I get it, I just save it. So, you know, um, Twitter. So hit me up on there. But let's start with Josh Rogers. Are you 100% legit? Now I wanted to answer this one because I get this question all the time. Am I natural, basically? Yeah. Hand on my heart, I've never taken a performance enhancing drug. I've just worked my ass off for 11 years. Well, that's my training time. I haven't, let's see how long I've been training. Because I took about three years out when I was doing event planning because that just took all of my time and I lost like a stone, no two stone even. I dropped from 13 stone all the way back down to um, 11 something. And I was, that, was, that was depressing but consistently it's been about six, six, seven years. So yeah, all natural, no performance enhancing drugs. Will I ever do it? I don't feel the need to, I'm quite happy with the way that I look. Um, so yeah, um, that's, I don't really see any point. I don't have anything against anyone that does it, but it's just not my cup of tea. Okay, next question is from Monty Idiots. These are YouTube names, I'm not insulting anyone, just, just to put it out there. Um, hi, what would you say is the best time to have protein, i.e. protein shakes? Love your videos, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, best time to have protein shakes, there isn't a best time to have protein shakes. Protein shakes is just to, it makes life easier sometimes and that's how you should look at it. It shouldn't be protein shakes are going to make me big, it should be food is going to make me big. Protein shakes are there if I'm struggling to get food. So say you're eating loads of meals and you just can't fit any more in, but you need to hit your macros for protein, have a protein shake. If you're a nine to five worker and you have an hour to train at um, lunchtime and you don't have time to sit down and eat a meal, have a protein shake. So it's more convenience of supplementing your diet that should already be on point, if that makes sense. Okay, on to the next question. Christopher Arrington. Great video, thank you. I'm having trouble targeting my rear delts. I have a nice pair of fronts, but I can't seem to really hit the rear. Advice, please. Rear delts are one of those stubborn ones because you, you know, everyone does lateral raises, everyone does front press. So you're always, you're constantly hitting the front and the side. Um, even when you're bench pressing, you're hitting the front. So rear delts are a muscle that you need to train just as hard, not as heavy because you know it's, it's not as big as a muscle but you need to train it just as hard with the same intensity one thing that I noticed just recently is when your elbow is higher than your hand and your hand is twisted to about that angle and you're doing the rows like that personally I feel that in the rear delts massively um, and that's just playing around the angles that's that's all I've really done so Play around with it, let me know how you get on. If you're still having trouble, hit me up again. So 
So thanks Chris for that question. Next one is from Skelly Chippy. Hey bro, you're a long time subscriber. I like you, you comment on a lot of videos. How old are you and when did you start lifting? How old do I look? Hmm? Hmm? If I shave the beard, I'd probably look like I was 20. But no, I'm 30 years old. 31 at the end of March. I've, I've gone over the hill. So, <clears throat> sorry, I started lifting when I was 19, when I joined, when I started uni, and I was just skinny. <sighs> Horrible look. Hated it. Like all the other guys had already started with their press ups and they had already started gymming and they, they looked good. My friend JK had this big barrel chest, looked like a flipping B cup breast. <laughs> He's gonna kill me for saying that. <laughs> um, yeah, everyone was had a good shape on them and I was just scrawny and I just I said, you know, enough's enough. And then I started training. It was mainly to get girls and then it developed into football and then bodybuilding and physique so yeah the journey the start of the journey was to get the ladies um yeah thanks for that question next question is from jaffa cakes 13 hey have calf extensions built significant calf mass not one exercise will do that there isn't a special exercise that will build a certain muscle group calves are a stubborn one especially for black people. Yeah, I said it. Um, we struggle with calf development. It's, there are some genetic mutants out there who have massive calves, but the general consensus is most black people struggle with calves. Um, that's because most of us have a quite high insertion. And to build calves, all I've done is really just hammer them. Two, three times a week, I found that more than that was detrimental. But two, three times a week and I just worked on really slow. Because if you, coming from a sprinting background and in American football, my calves are always doing this. Because I'm always running. So me going to the gym and doing that on a calf machine is just doing what I've been doing before. If running didn't grow my calves, then how the hell is putting weight on and doing it fast again gonna grow my calves, so I do the opposite. So I put um, slightly heavier weight on, but I'll go real slow. Stretch at the bottom, real slow. I'm actually, I'll do a video for you guys on that one, on how to bring up your calves, but thanks for your question. And this one's from Yus Mernik. I hope I pronounced it right. I saw the little thing above the S, so I think I pronounced it right. Um, in my Access All Areas 1 video, he noticed that I had stretch marks. Well, he noticed I had lines on my shoulder and he's asked, are those lines old stretch marks? Yes, they are. Um, when I st started training, I'm genetically gifted with shoulders and arms. Those are the first things. It was weird. Like, my, my chest was was always lagging, my back was okay, and then I just had these flipping shoulders and arms that my friend JK started calling me jacks from Mortal Kombat with bolt-on arms. Just looked strange, so I had to kind of ease off. But my genetic um, blessing is my shoulders, so when they grew rapidly, I got stretch marks. So yeah, they are stretch marks. Okay, next question from Robert Bohannon. What type of pre-workout do you use? Um, I just use one with, I don't like the ones with too many stimulants. I don't like the ones that talk crap on their packets and say, oh, it's got this um, androgen peroxide sh shit. No, those ones where they try to make up words to make it sound anabolic and all that kind of stuff. I, I kind of stay away from them. I look at the ingredients and look at the dosages and all that kind of stuff. Um, at the moment I'm using Bodybuilding Warehouse Performance Prime, top, top notch um, pre-workout, loving it. Endless energy, um, especially for this point in my prep. So yeah, definitely give that one a thumbs up. Reflex Muscle Bomb is also a good one, but go on to knowwhatsup.com and you can see what the dosages are like in each one and what we recommend because I'm here to tell you the truth about it. 
I'm not here to scam you. I'm not here for. I'm not signed to any supplement company. I'm here to give you honest reviews on what supplements I think are the best for you. So check that out. Okay, next question. This one's from Killer BGX or Killer BG. Sorry. What do you think about the keto diet? Does it work because of low carbs or is it because of less calories due to less carbs? Um, if you ask me this question about three months ago, four months ago, I would have written it off straight away. Um, purely because that there's too many people who take things too seriously, they take it to the extremes. There's a like there's be a diet method which is just a, a slight adjustment of something that's already there, but then they take it to extremes. When we went on our honeymoon to Mexico, there was one dude, um, MMA fighter or whatever. He was like, "Yeah, all I do is keto, man. You know, I have endless energy and blah 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 blah. I eat, you know, butter every a stick of butter every day. You what? You eat a stick of butter every day and and drink salt." Hmm? Wait, wait, let's back up. Can't, you can't go past that like you never said nothing. You eat a stick of butter. This is the kind of mindset that people have with these diets. But saying that, since I started prepping with Scott for this Arnold Classic, I'm pretty much on a keto diet and I'm staying full, I'm getting leaner, um, I do have a lot of energy, but it's not stupid and there has to be a transition period you can't just say i want to be keto and then just um start eating butter and chicken and no carbs there needs to be a transition there needs to be a crossover it needs to be done properly so if you want to do keto i i think it's pretty good but please do it properly and don't be one of those extremists and sorry to answer the question um, it works because you're, you, during that transition period, your body learns to process fat for energy as opposed to carbs, but it won't do it instantly. That's why I said once you do the transition period. Hope that answers the question. I rambled on a little bit, sorry. All right, and final question I'm going to answer today. This one from Emil Acton. You've been posting on every single video with this question, but there's no thing on your um, thing to reply and it's a long ass question. So I was like, okay, let me throw this in here. <laughs> hey Gabriel, I have a question. Why do some bodybuilders and athletes train every muscle group once per week instead of twice per week? And also what is your opinion about training every muscle group once per week? And in that week where you train your muscle, you go very hard and let that muscle rest for the rest of the week. I train six times per week versus twice per week for an intermediate. I have been training just over two years and I currently train one muscle group each week. I have been doing this for about 10 weeks, but I train legs and calves twice a week. Whew, what was another mouthful? Thank you for your question. Um, let me just scan over it again. That was a lot to take in. So, Trains every muscle group, wants to know why bodybuilders train every muscle group once per week. It's not every athlete and every bodybuilder that does that. Maybe the magazines depict that athletes do that, but that's not the case. If I have a lagging body part, then I'll, I, might, I might train that body part twice a week. At one point, my legs, I wasn't happy with them, I was training them three times a week. I wasn't happy with my calves, so I changed, I changed that from one week to once a week to twice a week to three times a week, tried four times a week. It all depends on what your vision is, what your ultimate goal is. If you've got a picture of what you want to look like, you have to be true to yourself and say, oh, well, my legs are shit, or my chest is crap, or I need more of a V taper, or I need more traps. You need to be honest with yourself in that respect, and then that then dictates how hard you need to go in each muscle group, whether you need to do it twice a day, twice a week, or once a week. I have very good shoulders. I train them once a week. I have a lagging chest. I'll train it twice a week. When I wanted to bring my quads up, 
I train them three times a week. So it's all relative to you. Um, like I said, just figure out what type of physique you want, what type of shape you want, and then build your program around that. All right, so that is the end of the Q&A. Like I said, hit me up on Twitter if you have a question that you want answered or leave a comment below and I'll do it in another one. If you guys like these Q&As, I'll try and do one every week, but you guys have to let me know because I can't mind read. So, again, Unleash the Boost. Limited edition t-shirts, gonna be signed, embroidered, fitted. The hug I'm wearing a large right now. Check out the Fearless Wolfpack store. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and until next time, peace.